Hey everybody, it's Chris from AC Works, and we're going to talk about generator power ports and how you can utilize them to maximize the use of your power in the generator to run machines that you're using for the job site or your home. The first thing I want to point out is the running watts are going to be different than the starting watts. So if you're not familiar with these two different numbers, you want to do the math so that the machines you're using are only fulfilling the running watts. To explain the purpose of the starting watts, when you go to start up a vacuum or a pump or any other kind of machine you have, you're gonna have a little bit of a power surge. So say, for example, when you turn on an industrial fan, theoretically, on that startup, it's gonna do a little bit of an extra power surge to draw more power. But when you're running your equipment, it's important to do all the math so the equipment you're using does not go over your 10,000 watts. You don't want to go over that because then you're gonna start tripping the breakers. These breakers work as a safety feature for the whole generator, but then also for each individual circuit. So we're gonna talk about how you can use cords and splitters to maximize the use of all the outlets on your generator. For pieces of equipment that use NEMA 515 plugs, let's discuss a couple of use case scenarios. It might be a cleaning or flood restoration company that needs to connect multiple vacuums, portable extractors, or fans to your generators. Or you might be doing some construction work and need to power a power saw, hand grinder, or a concrete grinder. Maybe you don't have the luxury of a transfer switch and need backup power and just need to plug in some things for your home. We want to make sure that when we are connecting everything to the generator, we are not exceeding the running watts. In order to get your wattage, use simple multiplication. The way the math works is you take your amps times your volts and that equals your watts. So let's take a look at the generator. We have two duplex sets of 520 outlets right here. Each set has their own 20 amp circuit breakers. So if you're running 120 volt power cords and it looks like this, where you have the two parallel blades, it will be NEMA 515, a 15 amp plug. But you may have another type of plug where instead of having the two parallel blades, you actually have one that's parallel this way and then another one that's perpendicular. That's technically a 20 amp plug-in called NEMA 520. On the generator, it's actually a T-shape. That T-shape allows you to plug in either the NEMA 515 or the NEMA 520. Whichever you have, it's gonna fit. Although these outlets are kind of hard to split, you can still get up to 2,500 watts of power from each duplex set. If you're using a piece of equipment that does use 2,500 watts, subtract that from 10,000 to get what you have left to use. And we will move on to the next outlet. So this one here, this is actually 125 volts, but a 30 amp instead of 20 amp. And it's NEMA L530. It has its own 30 amp breaker, and with that, remember, it'd be 125 volts times 30 amps. So you get up to 3,750 watts. Remember that when plugging things in to avoid tripping the breaker, you don't want to pull more than 30 amps. And if you want to run things to have regular household plugs, you could use something like L530 W515. And it comes in the one and a half foot length or 25 foot length. And it splits you down to the three female outlets. The only thing to keep in mind is that this is still a 30 amp circuit. So you will still have to stay below the 30 amps combined here. You can plug in three different things at 10 amps a piece or less. If you have something that is 12 amps, you can plug two of those in and use 520 outlets for the third item. If all of your equipment is 15 amps, you could again plug two into this splitter and your third into the 520 outlet. You can't plug three 15 amp pieces of equipment into the L530 splitter because that will equal 45 amps and trip the breaker. Because the generator in this example has running wattage of 10,000 watts, you could very well max out this L530 outlet and the 520 outlets. You could also use the next one, which is L1430, but to a very limited capacity. This is a NEMA L1430. It would have two hot wires capable of putting out 250 volt power, but would also have its own duo 30 amp breaker. With the generator having 10,000 running watts of power, the L1430 can power many different things. L1430 outlets are capable of handling up to 7,500 watts on its own. If you were to max out this outlet, you would not have too much left, but you'd still have about 2,500 watts to be exact. You are able to connect this type of adapter, L1430 F520, 
which is available in different length variations. This allows for four 520 or 515 plugs. The green set of dots allow for up to 30 amps of power, and so does the red set of dots. Each set of dots represents a hot wire. A common misconception is that the hots combine to create up to 30 amps, but in reality, each hot is capable of carrying up to 30 amps. Now we have arrived at the final outlet, NEMA 1450. This also has two hot wires, capable of putting up 250 volt power, and also has its own 42 amp duo breaker. It's 42 amps because remember, the running wattage is 10,000 watts. 250 times 42 does equal 10,500, but that extra wattage is still okay in this scenario. If you still need extra household connections from this outlet, you can use S1450 F520-018. And again, the same set of rules apply to each set of green and red dots. You can now see that with all these adapters, you're able to connect up to an additional 11 NEMA 515 plugs, but as long as you don't exceed the 10,000 watts. Like I mentioned before, you want to stay under the max amps for each circuit and under the 10,000 running watts for the generator to stay powered up. So, just to recap, you have the volts times the amps equals watts. And that's how you can measure where you're at in comparison to your running watt capacity on your generator. Just be aware of how many circuits you have on your generator. In this case, we have five. In order not to trip the circuit, we have to stay under the max amperage of the breaker. So if you have any questions anytime about any of this, of course, just comment on this video, chat with us on the website, or book a call with me. The link is in the description below. I hope this helps you maximize your generator output potential. For more videos about how to stay powered up, hit subscribe or follow us on our socials. See you next time.